Africa is home to the Sahara Desert, the world's largest desert. The Sahara Desert covers more than 9 million square kilometers. It stretches from the Red Sea in the east to the Mediterranean in the north to the Atlantic Ocean in the west, including 10 different countries, Nigeria, Chad, Libya, Mali, Morocco, Mauritania, Egypt, Tunisia, Algeria, and Sudan. The sand dunes characteristic of desert landscapes is the primary reason for the region's notoriety. The sand dunes can rise to the heights of up to 183 meters. On the other hand, they only take up around 15% of the desert. How did the Sahara Desert evolve into the severe, arid environment it is now, given that it was once a tropical area? Stay tuned to find out. Climate Changes Since ancient times, the climate has been characterized by alternating periods of wet and dry weather. These variations are brought on by minor wiggles in the tilt of the Earth's orbital axis, which, in turn, alters the angle at which solar radiation enters the atmosphere and causes the alterations mentioned earlier. During the West African monsoon season, there has historically been an increase in the amount of energy coming in from the sun at various points in the course of the Earth's history. North Africa receives a significant increase in precipitation during these seasons, which are referred to as African humid periods. When it rains more, the region sees an increase in the number of rivers, lakes, and other forms of vegetation, a strange event that happens in Sahara. However, between the ages of 8,000 and 4,500 years ago, a peculiar event took place. Because the transition from humid to dry took place in some regions at a much faster rate than the orbital precession alone could explain, the Sahara Desert as we know it today is a direct outcome of this transformation. Archaeologist David Wright reveals the subsequent events in his study, which may be found here. While he was going over the archaeological and environmental data, which he mostly gathered through sediment cores and pollen records that were all dated to the same period, he spotted something that appeared to be a pattern. There was a comparable alteration in the sorts and variety of plants wherever the archaeological record demonstrated that pastoralists, humans with their domesticated animals, had been present. Pastoralists are defined as humans with their domesticated animals. It seemed as if every time humans and their goats and cattle hopscotched across the meadows, they left everything in their path looking like a scrubby desert. Because of this, Wright concluded that overgrazing the grasses led to a decrease in the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. As you may already know, plants release moisture into the air, leading to clouds forming. According to him, this may have been the cause of the abrupt termination of the humid period that cannot be explained by the changes in orbital position. It is possible that these nomadic individuals utilize fire as a tool for land management, which would have accelerated the rate at which the desert took hold. When you think of the Sahara Desert, do you picture whales playing and frolicking on the sweeping sand dunes? There is evidence that the pre-generators of today's whales previously swam around and in the hot African desert. Despite the fact that the whales can't live outside of water, and the possibility of this is extremely low because whales can't survive without it. Discovery of feet. Take a step back to 1902, when geologists in Egypt's western desert led their camels into a valley. Sandstone boulders had been molded into odd patterns over centuries by the force of powerful winds, and at night, the moonlight was so bright that it made the sand glitter like gold. The searing summer temperatures on a nearby hill earned it the nickname Mountain of Hell. But whale remains were found in this dry valley. Some of the bones measured 50 feet in length and had vertebrae that were as thick as logs used for a campfire. They dated back 37 million years to an age when this area and all of northern Egypt were submerged by a shallow tropical sea. And although the geologists didn't realize it at the time, the prehistoric specimens in the sand would reveal clues to one of evolution's most nagging mysteries, how whales became whales. This is one of the questions that has plagued evolutionary theory for a long time. The discovery of feet on these long dead whales provided crucial information. 
the idea that whales were formerly terrestrial mammals that had migrated into the water over millions of years and gradually lost their four legs was one that scientists had entertained for a long time. The fact that modern whales have bones in their vestigial rear legs is evidence of this. But until paleontologists began digging hundreds of whale fossils buried at Wadi Hitan and found legs and knees, there was no evidence in fossil record to show that the transition had occurred. Although older specimens of footed whales have since been identified, those found in Wadi Hitan are unrivaled in terms of both their number and how they have been preserved. The valley, which is around a three-hour drive from Cairo, has recently been designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and approximately 14,000 people visit it a year. Paleontologists believe that the land-dwelling progenitors of whales were scavengers similar to deer or pigs that lived in close proximity to the ocean. Around 55 million years ago, they began to spend more time in the water. At first, they fed on dead fish that had been washed up along the shore. Later, they began to pursue prey in the shallows and eventually began to wade farther into the sea. Some of them developed characteristics that made it easier for them to hunt in the water. Because they were no longer required to support their entire body weight when at sea, they gradually became larger over the course of time. With their backbone becoming more elongated and their rib cages becoming more expansive, the majority of the fossils found in the valley can be classified into two categories. The gigantic Basilosaurus had a physique that was similar to that of an eel. The smaller but powerful muscled Dorodon appeared to be more similar to a current whale, at least until its mouth opened. It revealed a jaw laced with serrated knives rather than peg-like teeth. Whale fossils and rakat structures. In the heart of the Atacama Desert in Chile, the fossils of more than 75 different whales have been discovered. This discovery is quite interesting. The question of how they got there has been the topic of much discussion among experts. Have you ever heard of the city of Atlantis that was supposedly lost? You are going to be astounded when you learn how this well-known city is related to the upcoming discovery in the Sahara Desert. This brings us to the Rakat structure, commonly known as the Eye of the Sahara, or the Guelb Er Rakat. It is a geological structure in the Sahara Desert that looks like a massive target. The sculpture may be seen throughout a desert region in the Mauritania that is 40 kilometers broad. During so many centuries, just a few of the nearby nomadic tribes were aware of the formation's existence. It wasn't until the 1960s that the Gemini astronauts, who were using it as a marker to watch the progress of their landing sequences, took the first photographs of the structure. After some time had passed, the Landsat satellite took some more pictures, which it then used to offer information about the structure's size, height, and scope. Eye of the Sahara Geologists initially thought that the Eye of the Sahara was an impact crater, meaning that it was formed when something from outer space crashed into the planet's surface. Geologists are forced to hunt for an alternative answer because extensive analysis of the rocks included within the structure have revealed that its origins are fully based on Earth. The Eye of the Sahara is thought to be a geological dome, according to the findings of geologists. There are rocks in the formation that are at least 100 million years old, and some of them date back to the time that is well before there was life on Earth. These rocks consist of igneous volcanic deposits as well as sedimentary layers, which are created when layers of dust, water deposits, sand, and mud are pushed and pushed by the wind. Today, geologists are able to locate multiple varieties of igneous rock in the eye area. These varieties include kimberlite, carbonatites, black, and rhyolites. Nevertheless, there is yet another interpretation for this phenomenon known as the Eye of the Sahara. What do you think about the discoveries in the Sahara Desert? Let us know in the comment section below.